Hi there, my name is Rob Shirley. I'm a senior technical nutritionist at Odysseo. I'm here today to provide some perspectives on the U.S. livestock industry and potential practical cost-saving solutions that are targeted towards nutrition. Being on the front line, many of you have already thought about and are implementing some of the nutritional solutions I'll talk about in a little bit. The objective today is not to tell you what to do, but rather provide ideas that will help us all consider, adapt, and become a bit more flexible in what we do day to day. We can all recognize that whether we're talking about the poultry, swine, or beef industry, the U.S. is an efficient powerhouse when it comes to livestock and meat production. That being said, we've seen a monumental change and meltdown in the farm-to-fork supply chain over the past several weeks. This in turn has had a massive negative effect in terms of feeding, feed ingredient availability, and managing our livestock at all stages of production. Focusing on feed ingredients, dry distilled grains and corn oil have all but disappeared from the market as many of the ethanol plants have slowed down or closed. Likewise, ruminant and porcine meat and bone meal, as well as poultry byproduct meal, are in short supply and are more expensive. This is due to the fact that the swine, beef, and poultry processing plants have slowed down and in some cases closed, thereby directly affecting the raw materials that supply the rendering industry. The change in the availability and higher cost for these feed ingredients has put enormous pressure on the supply and cost of other ingredients, making formulation a massive challenge. Compounding this, the severe contraction in the restaurant and the food service sectors has upended the supply demand dynamic for meat. We're holding livestock at the farm longer because they cannot be processed in a timely manner. This means that animals are approaching or have exceeded their target market weight for the processing plants that they were destined for. While this may not seem like a big deal, producers still have to feed and manage their animals until such time that they are processed. Together, each of these issues has created a huge problem in terms of logistics and cost. To relieve some of the pressure from the system, nutritionists like myself are having to rethink everything and make decisions that don't feel natural, essentially coming up with creative nutritional solutions that reduce cost and have a desired effect out in the field. For example, the industry is looking at reducing dietary nutrient density, limit feeding using alternative ingredients, or a combination of these strategies as a way of reducing growth rate or maintaining weight. To effectively lower nutrient density and hit our reduced production targets, we can use non-traditional ingredients that are both bulky and lower nutrient density. That being said, a lot of these ingredients have a variable non-starch polysaccharide content, or NSP content. NSPs are important because they trap nutrients and can have negative effects within the animal's GI tract if they are not broken down. As a side note, we also need to recognize that these alternative ingredients, assuming that they're available, will change the feed milling dynamics. To improve the availability and digestibility of these alternative plant-based ingredients, NSP enzymes such as xylanases, gluconases, cellulases, and debranching enzymes, which are also called arabinofuranocytases, can be effectively used to literally tear apart NSPs, thereby reducing the negative NSP-related effects and allowing livestock to extract more energy and other nutrients out of the feed. Over the last three months, the livestock industry has definitely been turned inside out. We're adjusting to a lot of new realities with very few tools in our hands. From the nutrition side, NSP enzymes, and we're talking about the ones that actually work, have the potential of adding flexibility to new formulation and production paradigms, all while reducing feed cost. As a part of Odysseo's and my mission, we want to make sure that the livestock industry has the tools it needs for flexibility and success. In the following video, I'll provide some additional details on NSP enzymes, specifically RoboBio Advanced and Advanced Phi, how they are used in swine and poultry feed formulation, and economics that might make sense for your operation. For those of us that touch agriculture, we are a part of the small yet effective family. We are in a fortunate and unique position of feeding our families, neighbors, and the world, and we look after each other the best we can. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Hope you all stay safe, stay healthy, and I look forward to speaking with you soon. Take care.